Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I will be sharing with you the two stocks that I'm buying in September. One I've already added to my in my portfolio and one I already owned before and I'm going to add as I get my wages in September. So um, as you can guess by the two pictures that I show here, both are related to the airline industry and uh, obviously we all know that airlines are very unattractive right now to invest in. There's a very high risk, high reward. I believe that within the business you can find some companies that are less risky than people will assume and that have a, a, a decent, like a two to three times potential upside. So I will be sharing those with you today. The first one is Aviation PLC. Aviation PLC is a airplane lesser and for the, the people for of my membership group that is entirely in Dutch by the way uh, I wrote an extensive report about Aviation PLC um, the company is, is, is very small it has like 80 million market cap so it, it's, it's, a, it's a micro cap and I believe that this company is unjustified like it has dropped uh, like 60 70 percent in the past six to eight months and I don't think that's justified and um, I will tell you in this video why I have opened a position in this company already at the start of uh, September uh, it was around this current price uh, I think I bought it at 125 um, it does have uh, it, it. It is going to lose some revenue, but I don't think it's going to be all that much. But I will get to that in a bit. So aviation, aviation, I should say, aviation PLC is a airplane lesser, as I mentioned before, and they uh, lease airplanes to airlines, and airlines will use them to fly around cargo or customers, mostly customers for aviation PLC, by the way, and. Um, the type of business means that we can easily see uh, what uh, revenue is going to uh, be for the next few years because they will have contracts, lease contracts, and these lease contracts will need to be paid monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever they have decided. And um, based off of that, we could just see, okay, what kind of revenue will we or are we able to expect in the next few years? Looking at that, we here we have like a sheet of Aviation PLC and here we see that I marked is that they have an unearned, unearned contracted revenue of 871 million. And as you see on the left, the weighted average remaining lease term is 6.8 years. So the unearned contracted revenue is the revenue that they will earn uh, in the upcoming years based on the lease contracts that they have now. So it's not that easy to get rid of a lease contract unless it's just uh, at the end of its period. So uh, unless you go basically broke and you have to file for bankruptcy, you will have to pay these uh, amount of money to the car to the lesser, which is uh, evasion PLC in this case. So this is a uh, if you look at the current revenue, it's about 99 million, I believe, uh, like the trading 12 months. Um, so the fact that they are going to receive almost nine times that in the next, well, I, don't, I wouldn't say, uh, I think the contracts will be a bit longer, but uh, a lot of the revenue that they uh, will earn in the next few years is, is basically guaranteed unless the company goes, unless an airline customer goes bankrupt. So what we see when we go to balance sheet, and now I know that I made a mistake, uh, is actually 119 million in revenue. And of that revenue, almost 50 million is in net income. Well, if you think of a market cap at 80 million and a net income of 50 million, that is quite insane. So, um, the, the, the price to earnings ratio is actually a little bit below two. And if you think about how the business operates, it's actually not as uncertain. It, like if you look at the share price and the current valuation, you think, okay, they've lost their revenue entirely. 
but revenue is actually pretty consistent. There's a slight drawback, and that is that one of their customers has been going bankrupt, and that is Virgin Australia. So they went bankrupt a few months ago, and they went uh, uh, into a voluntary administration on the 21st of April. Um, that was a few months ago. Uh, I think it was two weeks or three weeks ago that it became a certainty that Bain Capital, that's a private equity firm, was able to buy Virgin Australia. Um, Virgin Australia was a big customer of Aviation. Uh, they had 13 aircrafts. So that's actually a steep loss in revenue. At least that's what it looks like. However, um, the, the Virgin Australia contracts were actually about to expire in the next year and the next three years. So it was actually of all the customers, all the big customers, I should say, it was probably the most favorable one to go bankrupt if they had to choose. So I highlighted a few things. The total debt is 46 million. And it say, states that the book value of these aircraft significantly exceeds this. We'll get to that in the next sheet. So keep that in mind, 46 million in debt. And at the bottom you'll find Aviation's initial unsecured claim filed in Virgin's administration is $97 million. That is a steep claim that you of money that you are unable to earn because a company goes bankrupt. So with this deal that is now confirmed by Bain Capital that they are going to purchase Virgin Australia, they will receive between nine to ten nine to thirteen percent of their initial unsecured claim. Um, well, would mean that they will receive about ten million, give or take. Uh, that's actually the expectations of the money that they're missing because Virgin Australia went bankrupt. It is a lot difficult in that I've went through the entire accountancy report of uh, of Deloitte that went through the that uh, went through the Virgin Australia uh, bankruptcy basically and to see okay what options do they have, uh, what agreements can they sign with certain people and what will be happening to all the debt and creditors and stuff like that. That is what I've read. Um, that looks quite appealing in a way because sure these aircrafts are coming back to aviation and they can find a new place for it but since they had a deal with virgin and they don't uh, and they are unable to uphold that uh, deal or contract they at least will receive some money off of it so that's not too bad so having a look at virgin australia i will get into the next sheet and it will say that it's below 20 percent of revenue that they got from Virgin Australia in 2019. But here we see all the airplanes that Aviation had and uh, or that Aviation had leased to Virgin Australia, I should say. Um, two were Fokker at once. And um, what happened is basically that they have signed finance leases for these aircraft and they have a sale price. So they've sold these aircrafts to Virgin Australia or the the company that is uh, making decisions for Virgin Australia right now because they are in voluntary administration. Um, so this is pretty positive that they were able to sell Fokker uh, planes above uh, book value. So this is a, a positive thing for the balance sheet. And then you have 11 other planes, five ATRs, seven two six hundred, which are regional airplanes. So they are shorter for shortened distances. And these are uh, have a book value of 77.6 million and the other six have a book value of 78 million so that is a total of almost uh, 100 or over 150 million dollars while a debt that is associated with it is only 50 million so uh, on the balance sheet this risk is not that bad or it shouldn't be that it is not that it doesn't look that bad let me put it like that obviously the fact that they will not have these revenues for in the next one and a half years or until they have assigned these six or these five ATRs and three of the six uh, ATRs 500s that's their that I'm referring to the three aircraft to be transitioned and expected to be retained in the recapitalized version obviously that could take a while so they are losing money because of it but if you look at the value of of, of the planes and the value of the of the debt then this is not looking too bad for aviation. 
So here we see uh, the revenue of how it was divided as of uh, 31st of December in 2019. On the right you see that Virgin Australia was 19% of the revenue. Obviously that is a big part of it and it is a shame that they're losing it. But you see that they are pretty well diversified to at least maintain the rest of the revenue. So all in all if you look at how much they have to spend on debt and on interest and stuff like that. the them missing Virgin Australia doesn't put them at risk. Sure, the the profit is going to be lower by, well, I, th I think it could be lower by about 50%. But other than that, um, I don't think this will be as uh, as much of a as impactful as we as the share price makes it seem that this uh, virus actually is. So um, that is actually. Like you have to keep this thing in mind. The share price drops 60, 70%, but of the revenue this year, next year, and the year after that, they cannot lose more than 20% each year. And I think this 19% is going to get lower over these uh, few years because the contracts were expiring. That was expected, I mean. So they haven't lost that much in comparison. Um, so I do think that the share price is, uh, is is too low for what they're currently experiencing. And if you look at the bottom point, like you can read all of this, pause the video and read all of this, it's actually pretty interesting. But the bot bottom part is that Air Baltic, Vietjet, Eva and Mandarin aircraft flying at 50% pre-COVID levels and they represent 60% of unearned contracted lease revenue, over 60% I should say. So these air lines are recovering already they are uh, aviation is pretty dependent on them and the fact that they are already recovering in asia and all that is a very good sign the next company is a much controversial one much more controversial one that's international airlines group i've talked about this company before um it is a, a consolidated airlines group so they own several big brands when it comes to airlines. Uh, I think some of you, yeah, I think if you've gone to an airport, you have seen these uh, these names, potentially, at least the top two ones, Aer Lingus, British Airways. Those are, the Aer Lingus one is from Ireland, the, the National Airline of Ireland. British Airways is from the from the UK. Um, Iberia, Level and Buelling are all big names or relatively big names in, in Spain. And... These airlines, some of them are even exposed to other parts in, in Europe as well, like uh, France, uh, Austria, and so on. So it's not just uh, Ireland, UK, and Spain, but that is where most of their uh, business is, is laying. And I'm not going to lie, this company got hit hard by the share price. As you can see on the right, you see that it was uh, it has been trading... In the early of this year it was trading around eight euros right now it's trading 1.2 so it dropped like 80 percent maybe even more it is not looking good and that is exactly why i'm investing in it so this was a kind of an old announcement it was uh, about one and a half months old um these are if you read all of this and the whole entire report on iag in their investor relations it's going to be pretty hurtful to read if you see the damage that's been done by this virus but if you look at um, these two highlighted points and that the first one is based on our current capacity planning scenario IAG would reach break even in terms of net cash flows from operating activities during the fourth quarter of 2020 so break even in net cash flows that's basically what you're looking for because that means that they will not be just throwing money at the business anymore. No, they will surviving and they will manage. So the fact that that is still expected is actually pretty good. In the most recent report of, um, I think it was a, a week ago, they also mentioned this, and so they are still expecting to break even a few months from now. If you look at the balance sheet where they have like six million in cash, this should easily uh, cover the this period. However, they have decided to also do an equity uh, injection, I guess. And uh, obviously, I'm not happy about that at all. That hurts the current shareholders. But regardless, I do think that once they get that money and taking this into account, I think they will recover. 
at some point. It's going to take a few years, but they will recover. At least that's what I believe. So the final point is active discussions remain ongoing with Globalia regarding a potential restructuring of the Air Europa uh, acquisition, taking into account the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Any agreed transaction would remain subject to regulatory clearances. So I mentioned this before, I believe um, International Consolidated Airlines Group is a consolidator. They buy other airlines and they just try to use economies of scale to reduce the costs and um, just create more value for shareholders. Um, so they were about to buy Air Europa and um, they didn't because of the Corona crisis. And um, I think that made a lot of sense because now you don't want to be buying airlines. You want to survive first and then you um, are going to see, okay, in what way can I expand? However, I like the part that I am reading this is that they are still looking to acquire this company. Or this airline and sure you might be wondering um, won't that make things worse potentially yes but the fact that they still feel comfortable enough to acquire these airlines or this airline in particular is actually a good sign that they are looking to still cre create shareholder value and still grow and still do whatever they meant to do a few years ago or almost two decades ago, I guess, when they started consolidating these airlines. So who knows what will come up in a few years, but don't get me wrong, the expectations the, of the airline traveling and uh, so on, it, it probably won't recover until 2023, but that doesn't mean that the price is going to stay that low, this low or even lower until 2023. We won't know that. and. Um, I think I am, or I believe that I should be buying these airlines, even though my position or, or the position of the airline industry will be uh, quite big in my portfolio. Well, this is not a great sheet, and I think you'll find no sheet like it in any other company, unless it's an airline company. And this is a sheet of uh, basically compared to revenue or the usage of whatever services they have compared to a year ago. So it's quarter to quarter. And I just wanted to add this to show you guys, okay, this company or all the airlines have been hit hard and there is no lying about it. There is just, you can't get around it. Like for some companies, look at, look at level, like 99.7 and 99.8% capacity. That's how low it dropped. That's insane. It's just, it barely flew. And the same goes for all the other companies. It's all minus 95% plus. So they got hit hard, but it does look like they are recovering right now. And um, it is uh, it is hurtful to see this, but it's also nice to see this in a way that you're not going to see this ever again, probably. Not such a drop. People will be more prepared for it next time and so on. But uh, yeah, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, in regards to revenue loss uh, quarter to quarter. Um, I do expect it to recover, of course, otherwise I wouldn't be investing in this company, but they are taking a hit, that is for sure. So the capital increase, the capital injection, as I said, I don't like this. Uh, they still had like 6 million or 6 billion in cash, I should say. So I think they will be able to survive until um, December based on my calculations and uh, I think it was even further. However, they decided to do this uh, preemptively, which I guess makes a lot of sense because you don't want to risk going bankrupt. Uh, however, at this share price, obviously you don't want to have a equity increase. So that is very hurtful. So what they have done, every current shareholder, uh, for every two shares that I own or somebody owns, you can buy three new shares for 92 cents uh, per share. Um, I think one of the reasons why the share price has been dropping in the past few days is because of this. Obviously there's an equity increase, uh, even though the company is trading at or below book value. Um, this is not something you would like to see. Uh, however, if you believe in this company, you give, you basically buy more shares, you invest in the company, you actually give the company more capital, which increases the, the chances of them surviving. Uh, 
IAG does have a spectacular track record of return on invested capital, meaning that they, uh, whatever they invest, whatever money they use, they make sure that it's used wisely. Um, so that gives me a little bit more faith, but I do consider this, this company uh, one of my highest risk companies at this point. I'm not one to, to think, oh, this company is too big to fail. Sure, this this has uh, this company has three national airlines. Like, can you imagine the catastrophe it would be if these airline if this air company goes bankrupt? What would happen to those countries? Like, it's almost unimaginable. Like, I think that would create a different crisis all uh, by itself. But um, it can still happen. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it can still happen. The risk is there. Uh, I am comfortable with this risk reward. Like I think the the potential upside at this point is, is four or five times um, for for like the next five six years. Uh, so so I, I like this company. I, I will keep investing in it. But I know 99% uh, of you guys will probably not be investing in it. If if it's not, it could just be only for the fact that Warren Buffett sold all his airline shares because of this risk. Like sure, it's very risky. Um, but if you are a contrarian investor. This is something that you may want to consider investing in. And that is basically contrarian investing. And I'm telling you, contrarian investing is so uncomfortable compared to momentum investing. If you don't know what momentum investing is, okay, there's good news and you're just going to ride on it. That's basically buying Tesla at, at eight, nine hundred dollars because it has gone up 300, 400% and you expect that it's going further. That's momentum investing it feels a lot more comfortable in the short term because it is likely that the momentum is going to go upwards and um, sure it always feels better to have green numbers instead of red numbers however contrarian investing and that is what I aim to do is try to go against the crowd so when everybody is selling something I am going to buy it that is my goal and I think that I am patient I am still relatively young I can I can wait out this downturn and I can see companies recover. So on the left you see the the current sentiment about airlines, and I'm not gonna disagree with it. I think it is rightfully so. However, if you are patient enough and you can look into the future, basically, or you have an image of the future, yeah, sure. In five six years, I think people will start flying again normally. Um, maybe a little bit less. Than we've seen previously because of um, the impact on the on on the world, but the the wealth is increasing overall. People are more uh, they have more money to spend. They go more on holidays. I think we will see. I think we, people will be flying again five to six years from now, and I think it will the number of passengers will be increasing every year until there is a crisis again like this one. So. Patience is a virtue and potentially a beneficial, a financially beneficial uh, for me, I guess. And that's basically what I'm waiting for. Um, but I'm like, I, I, I'm. What I'm trying to emphasize on is that if this doesn't make you feel uncomfortable, you're probably not doing it right. You should be a bit worried. Like I am a bit worried about. Okay. Am I thinking clearly? Am I making the right decisions? Because if everybody says that you shouldn't invest in them, then of course it's going to be very hard to stick to your own thesis or to create your own thesis and think, you know what? I think these people will be wrong. I think um, the consensus is wrong. And I think at some point these will recover again. So if you ever consider investing in anything like this make sure that you are feeling uncomfortable because if you are feeling comfortable it's probably not as contrarian as you think that's it for today guys uh, i hope you like uh, this video um, i'm wondering what you guys think about investing in airline stocks uh, i myself personally think that the aviation plc is not as risky as any airline out there because it's just an entirely different business i think it's for me personally it's more comparable to a bank the way they make money because it's basically just with uh, they basically lend money from the bank they buy something and they, they rent it out simply put it and that's basically how loans work 
So uh, I do think that's an entirely different business and I don't see the same risk there. However, the people out there do think it's the same. So I want to, I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what, uh, how you feel about these companies, if you're going to open a position on it. And of course, if you're not opening a position on it, I would love to know it as well. So thank you guys for watching and uh, hope to see you guys in the next video. As always, please keep in mind that I am not a financial advisor. The content on this channel and on my website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only.